Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Welcome to a very special edition of Around Kansas. I'm sitting here at the Home on the Range cabin with the great granddaughters of the man who wrote the music, Home on the Range. We're going to visit them. We're going to interview the descendants of Mr. Higley, who wrote the poem. Talk to Eldine Holtus, who actually is responsible for a lot of what we see here today. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect. By people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer, who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Around Kansas, brought to you by Tarwater Farm and Home. Come on by, we'll treat you like family. Welcome to the Home on the Range cabin, and with me is Eldine Holtus, and this is a really special day. This is one you've been looking forward to for a long time. Well, we've been working on it for about two years, or planning for it. Uh, we had celebrated our, the 140th anniversary of the cabin two years ago, and then completed the fundraising, and the restoration was actually completed in July of 13 and then we've spent the rest of the time planning this event. Now, Eldine, this is a very special place to you and, and talk about what this, what it means to you in this community. Well, in the community, it's probably, well, it's the only national historical site on, on the register, but personally for me, it, uh, it's a tribute to, not only to Dr. Higley, but also to my aunt and uncle, Pete and Ellen Rust, who saved it. They had an opportunity to sell it over, over the years, and then Aunt Ellen established the trust, which provides for perpetual care. And so it is guaranteed always to stay on the site where Dr. Higley built it. That's amazing. Bless their hearts for doing that, because Home on the Range, of course, the most famous state song in the nation, hands down, and such meaning for people who grew up on the, the plains. Yes, it is. And, uh, uh, Many, many of your uh, uh, viewers would have known, uh, would know Oren Friesen and they tell the stories about how well it's known around the world and we have anecdotes from people who say that it's taught in, in, in Hastings, Nebraska, in, in uh, Japan, Denmark, it's taught, it, it's played in, in Russia and then the most exciting one is about two years ago, Keith Hooper, local, here, local Rotarian, does work in the Philippines and a native tribe in the Philippines knew home on the range in their own language. So that's kind of our trump card, the latest one. That is really amazing. Now, the improvements to the site, talk about what you've done here. Well, of course, the, the, the pivot point will always be the cabin. Mm -hmm. And so all that we do will help to magnify that. Our, we have a nature walk with three foot bridges and a restored road bridge. We have data stations along that along that uh, nature walk, and each of the stories are different, but each data station has a reference to Dr. Higley, to Home on the Range, or to the, this community. Well, it's just a beautiful site, and of course right here on the creek bank, and you can obviously see why he chose this, can't you? Well, yes you can, and, and uh, uh, if you get a chance, you might interview some of the people that's over here, the, uh, the mountain man at the tent, because two of them stayed out there. And they shared with me this morning that they grasped the feeling that Dr. Higley would have had that because you really have to be out here alone mm -hmm. at night to grasp what this means. And there's another significance about it in that Dr. Higley and people who understand homesteading, most people homesteaded a northeast, southeast quarter. Mm -hmm. Dr. Higley took two 80s 
in the middle, east half of one, west half of another, so he could get the maximum footage of West Beaver Creek. <laughs> and that's what he was interested in, and he, he recognized the beauty of that. Well, kudos. You guys have done a wonderful job, and like you said, it's preserved forevermore and just done a wonderful job, and it took a lot of hard work and a lot of volunteers, and, and Kansas is very grateful for that. Thank you very much, and it's probably the only, according to our, the, our general contractor, the only one-room combination log limestone cabin still standing in the country on its original site. That's amazing. Thanks, Eldine. Thank you. We'll be right back. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Welcome back to the Home on the Range cabin and with me are two of the descendants of the people that actually put this poem to music. And one of the things that about the Wild West that may not be uh, as familiar to people is how popular orchestras orchestras were and, and bands and a lot of these little communities had pretty extensive brass bands and that was just a big piece of the entertainment and that's a big piece of this story. So with me are I'm Sally Lankus and hi I'm Susan Smith and we're descendants of Cal Harlan and Dan Kelly. Now tell me a little bit about um, Dan Kelly first let's start with him. Well, he married Cal Harlan's sister, and that so he became part of that. And he found the poem or heard about the poem mm -hmm. and set the tune to the words. And then what happened? Well, I also heard that after he met Dr. Higley, he was given the poem, and he had a tune in his head, and he hummed it all the way home. And once he got home, he wrote it down on paper. And then he took it to his brother-in-law Cal Harlan and brother Gene and they said I think this needs a refrain to keep the verses flowing mm -hmm. so they wrote the refrain which is the part everyone knows home home on the range where the deer and the antelope play um, then the Harlan brothers had an or orchestra and they were going to have a dance in a social in their home or their barn like mm -hmm. they did in those days and they played it for the first time that evening at that on that night. I think that was 1874. And the reaction when they played it was? Oh, it was overwhelming. Everybody wanted to hear it again and again. And then it became popular and being shared, you know, from state to state. And that led to a lot of controversy of who had really written it or where did it belong. Mm -hmm. So we're glad it wound up in Kansas. Absolutely. Where would we be without it? Now. Um, how did did you grow up knowing your family's connection to the story oh yes yeah so our dad made sure wherever we traveled whatever there was music around he would always request home on the range and you hear home on the range played all around the world that is so amazing so it's it's got to mean a lot to you to be here today it means so much if our father were alive he would just be over the moon from the time i was a little girl I knew that Home on the Range was the most special song, and I always knew the words, and I always got an A-plus on Kansas Day when I wrote my paper about Home on the Range. That's awesome. Thank you all so much for joining us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Around Kansas, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to the Home on the Range cabin, and with me are two of the descendants of Dr. Higley. And these guys grew up in Shawnee, Oklahoma, where Dr. Higley moved on to and is buried. Is that right? That's correct. So tell me what it's like to be here at this cabin, and is this a place you guys came back to when you were growing up? No, not really. In fact, just a couple of years ago was the first time I had ever visited here that I can remember anyway. Uh, <clears throat> but it was something that's always been a part of our family and, um, you know, the heritage of it, just the history of it's just been, you know, to connect it to our name and our family is just phenomenal that it's still standing thanks to uh, Pete and Ellen Rust and L. Dean Haltus. Uh, so, so it's just intriguing. I came back a couple of years ago for the first time and I was ready to come back this year. Now, when you were school kids, did you grow up singing this song? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this song is known all over Oklahoma, where we grew up, as well as the entire world. It's supposedly the most well-known song in the world, so, you know, this is it. <laughs> so did you jump up and down in school and like, we're related to the guy that wrote that? No, I don't think I, I don't remember ever doing that. I just, you know... We're like Dr. Higley. We're just kind of reserved, and we, we, we took our uh, credit, you know, whenever we could get it. <laughs> now, um, what does it mean to you to come here today with the rededication of the cabin and see all the hard work the people have done with it? It's, it's an honor, uh, but it's also a responsibility, I feel like, as part of the Higley family, you know, that we take a part in this celebration like this. But it's definitely an honor just to be a part of this and see so many people here that, that have uh, dedicated their time and their resources to helping this happen. Now, did you grow up um, in the country? Did, or I guess what I'm asking, the same kind of setting? I mean, do you connect with what he saw here when he wrote that song? Well, I do now. You know, when I grew up, I grew up in Shawnee, which is not a huge town, but I was pretty much a city boy. But um, after my wife and I married, her folks have a place in the country in Oklahoma. We moved there, and so this is this is great to me. I could live here. <laughs> How about you? Could you live here? I could live here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice out here. I mean, you can you can see where he came up with the words. You know, just beautiful. Now, a lot of people who think uh, Kansas is flat, and when you you see this. It's pretty rugged countryside right here. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, I mean, some parts are flat when you get out west, but here it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, just the rolling hills, a lot of trees. It's beautiful. Now, I saw on uh, Facebook the other day, uh, now, does the Higley family have, like, a Facebook page? Yeah. Is that where I saw that? Okay, the whole Higley family got together and sang Home on the Range. Was that the first time that had happened? No, we do that every year at our reunion. Really? Yeah, we have a reunion every year. That's how we end our reunions is by singing Home on the Range. Well, that is just pretty cool. And the Higleys are just spread out everywhere? Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, all across the country, uh, probably all across the world. I don't know. Now, uh, 
Dr. Higley is, is buried in Shawnee? Yes. Is that right? He and his, his wife. Now, uh, is, do you mark that with a special occasion, or do you do, do anything special to take care of his grave site? Well, no, it's in a cemetery that's well taken care of. Uh, there's actually a historical marker that's been there a long oh, time uh, that's out on the street that borders the cemetery. And uh, if you drive through Shawnee down Harrison Street, you can see it. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much, and congratulations. What an awesome family legacy. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids, and a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tarwaters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. If you miss us on Monday morning, you can join us at 6.30 a.m. every Sunday morning on RFD TV. Doc Talk has a national following. We're sure glad that you joined us on Mondays, but if you miss us and you want to catch us out on a Sunday morning, get up at 6.30 a.m. and we'll be right there, RFD TV, 6.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, and I'll see you down the road. is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Welcome to the Home on the Range cabin, and with me is my good friend Marla Matkin. And Marla has been portraying Libby Custer, among other historic characters, for quite a while. And Marla, it's good to see you. And as we walked up, Noelle said she always has the prettiest dresses. <laughs> well, it's always good to see you. I never know when I'm going to, when or where I'm going to run into you. So tell me about how you became interested in portraying Libby and, and what it's what kind of challenge it was to, she's an incredible woman. Oh, uh, undoubtedly. Uh, I've been portraying Libby for about 20 years now. And uh, it is a marriage of two of my loves, history and theater. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for someone who could speak to the West, the frontier military, uh, and uh, oftentimes you don't hear the women's perspective. Right. And so I thought she was the perfect one. You've got to have somebody that has a recognizable name to catch everyone's attention. Well, Custer, about the most recognized name in the West. Now, what? Um, tell us about Libby um, and how maybe how she met George and some of the characteristics that impress you about her. Well, she was intelligent, witty, charming, uh, but actually she contemplated not marrying at all. She considered going to New York and studying art. Uh, she couldn't see herself as a traditional housewife. And then at a Thanksgiving party uh, given by uh, the teacher at her seminary, uh, she met George Armstrong Custer. Now, she wasn't nearly as impressed with him upon their first meeting, official meeting. Supposedly they'd had a, a meeting in childhood, but wasn't as impressed with him as he was with her. In fact, it said that he walked away saying, this is the woman I'm going to marry. And she was a little miffed at the gentleman she was with that night, and so she just kind of spoke to him just to kind of mm -hmm. uh, satisfy the situation. And uh, Nothing new under the no, sun. No, so. <laughs> no. And, uh, but I tell you, Custer pursued her like he did all his adversaries with uh, Forever, and uh, uh, he was not to be denied, even though her, her father wasn't thrilled with him. And, uh, but nonetheless, uh, he persisted, won over not only her, but her father, uh, 
And so they were married on February 9, 1864. And then he died in 1876. And after his death, it's Libby that is most responsible for his any positive legacy that he left. Right. Uh, she wrote uh, three books, Boots and Saddles, Tenting on the Plains, and Following a Guide on. Plus, she had a very active uh, speaking circuit with the Red Path Lyceum Bureau, among others. And it was her mission in life to make sure that he was remembered as the hero that she felt he needed to be mm -hmm. thought of as. And uh, she lived a long and hearty life. She lived uh, uh, 57 years after his death. And so she outlived many of his contemporaries plus his critics. So there was no one really left when she was gone to dispute what she'd said or really could speak to it in first person. And so uh, some feel she's muddied the waters. Others, uh, a lot of uh, men greatly admire her for her loyalty to her husband. And, uh, but she has, it, not only has she left us with the legacy of George Custer, but of the frontier, of the West, of the army, and uh, the life at the time before it was settled. Well, Marla does an amazing job portraying Libby, and if you get the chance, you better catch her when she's in town. We'll be right back. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Now is the best time of the year to fertilize your lawns. The best product for our area is Fertilone Lawn Food Plus Iron. With its blend of fast and slower release nitrogen and a complete formula of minor nutrients, Fertilone Lawn Food Plus Iron provides your lawn with nutrients for the darkest green lawn in your neighborhood. Bring in a soil sample from your lawn for a free pH test. Get your soil recommendations from the experts at Jackson's. Turn to a Central National Bank Ag Professional. You'll be in good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand Ag Professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 1884. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Around Kansas, brought to you the by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope Seldom is heard a discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy all day Home, home on the range Where the deer and the antelope play Where seldom is heard a discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy all day
Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. Welcome to Kansas. Gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow. This is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes. And churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best 